one, if not the best thing about Obsidian is the fantastic community behind it. And one thing this community excels at is at making community things for all of us to use. This is obviously the most subjective video in the series, but since there are plenty of community themes to choose from, I thought you guys would benefit from at least seeing my personal top five. I'm not just gonna show you how they look like, but also what I like and don't like about them, as I believe it's something that you guys will appreciate. I'll also show you guys the theme that I identify with the most and have therefore been using it for a very long time, and it's surprisingly not in the top 10 in terms of downloads. Before we get started, I have three things that I really must have in my themes, so I'll go over them now. It must have different colors for the different types of headers. I'm a very visual person and I benefit a lot from being able to see right away headers one through five. So this is a big must for me. Secondly, it must be fully functional and work without issues with my existing plugins. CSS is not my area of expertise, so I need them to be plug and play. And lastly, it needs to look good. It needs to be at least somewhat aesthetically pleasing since like many of you, I spend many, many hours of my day inside my Obsidian Vault. All right, so now I'm gonna take you to the screen and let's take a look at them. Okay, so here we are back at our Mastering Obsidian Vault that we opened up in the beginning of this series. And before I get started with adding a custom theme, I put up this very quick markdown syntax page. This is just an easy way of seeing how the different themes impact our vault. And it's nothing complex, it's just, you know, the different headers, some lore mip, some text, something highlighted, a piece of code, and we're not gonna go into anything too deep in syntax for Markdown in this video because I will have a dedicated video about advanced Markdown on Obsidian coming up in the series. We're also gonna see how the different themes affect the Obsidian experience, such as how they affect the graph view, the calendar view over here, and the settings menu. Okay, so to add a custom theme, you wanna come over here to settings and then go to appearance and you're gonna hit manage. And once you press that, you're gonna be faced with a whole lot of different community themes. And what you can see right away is that Obsidian by default will be ranking all of these different themes by the total amount of downloads that they have. And over here, I'm gonna keep the dark themes only toggled on because I'm only interested in dark themes personally. All right, so the first one I'd like to show you guys is what I believe to be one of the most underrated themes in Obsidian. And it's all the way down here. It has about 2000 um, downloads. It's called Dark Moss by Sergey. And if we click use, now it's applied to our theme. And if we close this, you can see that we're already on the Dark Moss theme. And right away, what I love about this theme is the different colors over here, specifically for the coding. I think they contrast very, very nicely. I also really like that the headers are very easy distinguishable. And if you're new to Obsidian, you might think that most themes have distinguishable headers, but that's not the case. And as someone who's very visual like myself, I really appreciate this. One thing that I'm noticing missing here is if we come over here to the edit mode and we scroll down to this block of lorem ipsum text, I did put asterisks on this word here and double asterisks on this one here. But if we go to preview mode, it's hardly visible the difference. You can tell there's a slight bold, but that's about it. I've tried it with all the different plugins that I went over in episode two in this series and it works well. Another thing that I feel it's a little off is the calendar over here. It seems like, at least for me, the colors are not really matching the overall theme. And if we come over here to the graph view and we give this some color here by going to the graph settings, groups, add new group. And since we have a lot of mocks, we can just put mock as red and this will make all our mocks red and I'll be going over a lot more in depth on the graph view in an upcoming video in the series. So definitely stay subscribed if you don't want to miss that. Personally, I wouldn't focus too much on the graph view simply because it's very customizable. So your theme will not actually prevent you from customizing in any way that you want. Right, so if we come back to our Markdown syntax page, I just think it's a very underrated theme. I never see it mentioned on different videos and different blog posts and I've been using it for a while. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely up there for me. Okay, so the next one on our list is massively popular. It's ranked number two in downloads and it's called Blue Topaz. So you're not gonna have a hard time finding it at all. Just click use and now we have it. And as you can see, it's quite unique. If you look closely, there's a background image on the back that just complements the theme very nicely. Another thing I like about this theme and it's quite unique is if you come over here to edit mode, when you click on different blocks of text, it will hover over the whole paragraph. So this can come quite handy if you don't know where you are in the block of text. If you come over here to the top left, you can see that it's also very unique here that it has its own style for the vault name. 
and little arrows that designate different folders. And lastly, if we come over here to the graph view, it's very, very good looking right out of the box without any adjustments whatsoever. The graph view aesthetics are not particularly important until you have a much, much larger vault, but it's nice to know that you're already prepared for that when the time comes. One thing I don't love is that out of the box, maybe this is very easily editable, but out of the box, headers one and two have this line over it that's not particularly my kind of layout, but that's just a small thing. And overall, this is a very popular theme for good reason. I like it a lot as well. The colors match well, even on the edit mode, it's still very distinguishable. In fact, I even like the headers more on edit than preview. Overall, personally, this is my second favorite um, theme. I really, really like it. And if it weren't for the one that I'm using, which I'll show you very soon, I would be a blue topaz user, no problem at all. All right, so next up, we have Dracula. It's over here, it's in the top 10 most downloaded. And if we click on it, you can see for good reason as well. The headers and the colors are very vibrant, both on preview and edit mode. If we come over here to the graph view, which is hidden by default, you have to hover over it. You can see it's a very clean look. I also enjoy that when you go from edit to preview mode, like so, everything gets aligned to the left. Great overall theme. I think you'll be happy with Dracula as well. All right, so next up we have Grovebox right over here around top 15. And this one is very popular amongst developers, specifically because on the coding part of things, it's the colors are very easily distinguishable. And because of this color theme in the back, it's very easy on the eyes. This theme is not unique to Obsidian by any means. A lot of other programs use it. And if you're a developer, you'll feel right at home using this one. The headers are also very easily distinguishable, which I like. And the graph view, out of the box, nothing out of the ordinary, just clean. It works well with my plugins. I have no issues with it. I like it both on the edit and preview mode. A minor small detail that I don't like here is that it also is hard to see when something has asterisks or double asterisks. As you can see, you can hardly tell that this word here is bold. Okay, so now it's time that I show you guys the one I've been using for a very long time. So if you come back here to manage, the one that I use is called Cybertron. And I'm surprised not more people use this because personally, I think it's wonderful. So this theme takes inspiration from the very popular video game called Cyberpunk 2077. I have never played the game, but I can't argue that the colors look stunning. Something I really like about it is that it has this blue standard color on your text. And I thought I would be tired of it after a few months, but I can confidently say that I'm not. And the headers contrast very nicely. The graph view is gorgeous right out of the box. And if we come back here to the syntax text, it's very easy to distinguish small things that you do in the text. So these here that were hardly visible on other themes are very much visible here. Overall, I think it's a very clean theme that doesn't fail to add a lot of customization to it. The code looks good over here. The headers are very easily distinguishable and the colors are very vibrant in my opinion. And over here in blocks of text, when something has an asterisk or double asterisk, it's very distinguishable on the preview mode. And yeah, Cali looks good. Overall, I have nothing bad to say about this theme. All right, so now it's time for some honorable mentions. And if you didn't enjoy any of the themes that I showed you up to now, maybe you'll like some of the honorable mentions. And the first one is the Scordian. And as the name suggests, it's based on the very popular Discord app. So Discordian over here, as you can see, it even feels like you're in Discord. If you're familiar with Discord, you'll be right at home on this one. Because if you come over here to settings, honestly, it's hard to tell the difference. So as you can see, the text looks very clean, code looks nice. Definitely a problem here for me on the headers. And I don't particularly love that it's hard to distinguish these bits in the text. And the graph view looks just like Cybertron. So if you come over here, out of the box, it looks just like Cybertron. Overall, the code looks surprisingly good. Um, I definitely, as you know, I don't love that the headers are very hard to distinguish. I mean, they have different sizes, but that's not enough for me, unfortunately. Over here, the small things, the text, the asterisks are hard to distinguish as well. Something highlighted is actually highlighted, which is the first that I've seen. And the calendar is very minimalistic. I like that a lot. So yeah, definitely deserves a spot in the honorable mentions. The second one is called Obsidianite. And if we come over here back to manage. So yeah, it looks amazing, right? And when I was first looking for a theme for myself, I wanted this to be the one. I wanted to love this theme. 
because the colors, I think, are unmatched. These shades of blue go so well with this and with that. Calendar looks great. It's just really nice. But what I couldn't ignore is the headers. And not only are these ones very hard to distinguish, this one looks nothing like the others. It's the only one that has color. And these here, although very pretty, are hard to see. And overall, I think the main reason I wanted this to be the one is this right here. This is just so pleasing to the eye. It's too bad that it didn't work out. And lastly, I have one that I just, I have to show you. It's not something that I would use, but I know some of you might really enjoy it. It's called 80s Neon. And even though I would never use this, it is exceptionally well made. And yeah, very vibrant, very, as the name suggests, 80s Neon. I enjoy it to look at. I couldn't work in this situation, but I know that if you like this type of stuff, you will love this theme. If you're having a hard time picking a theme, I would just do what I did. So just pick two and at most three themes and switch around them every other week. And before you know it, you're gonna have one that you're gonna identify with the most and benefits your workflow. That one for me is Cybertron. I spent way too much time going over dozens and dozens of different themes right when I discovered Obsidian. And I don't recommend you guys go over that because then again, themes are just themes, right? We should be focusing on creating. I'm very curious to see what themes you guys have settled with and definitely let me know in the comments as I'd love to take a look at them. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.